This is Not Quite Dead. Episode 40, Creatures of Prometheus. been a few days since... Sorry, I thought I... Never mind. I don't know how many days it's... There was the night in York. They took him. Then I drove and drove and... Fuck. My, uh... My burner phone died on the drive. I didn't think to bring more than one. We were only supposed to be going to the river. I... This is the first chance I've had to charge the phone, the first chance I've had to to think. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. I'm just so fucking tired. I'm so tired. I haven't slept since since the day before the river. Uh, Um, we're in... It's a little cottage in the middle of nowhere... Nothing for miles than this. There's a little barn, some goats, some horses. Nothing else. The couple that lived here... I didn't mean to. It was an accident. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I didn't mean to let it go so far. I I don't know if they'll make it. I drove them a few hours towards where I could smell more cars and traffic, where I could tell cars drove by at least every hour. There was nothing else I could do. (laughs) We can't stay here. We need to move on to get somewhere where there's not a chance of locals or relatives coming knocking, but Nej, it's too much of a risk to move him right now, to him, to me, fucking honestly, I don't know how I got him here, we're fucking miles from anything, I need to hunt again, I don't know where I can, the car is 20 minutes walk away, I, I've been trying to build myself up to it, I think, I could make the walk. I don't know how sane I'll be at the end of it, but... I left it there because I tried to make it sure we couldn't be easily followed, but... Fuck. I, I, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. The nearest place with a large population is over an hour away. That's the safest option for me and for whoever I'm hunting, but that would mean leaving him here alone, exposed... And I'd have to take the car. And I need to get rid of the fucking car because fuck, fuck. So many people. So many. I... I don't know how I made it here. Nej, I thought... I genuinely thought he was going to kill me. I had to... I had to fucking drug him. I didn't even know that was possible before I saw... But enough barbiturates to kill two horses. That's what they were using at the place they were keeping him. I just... I loaded him up with everything I could. I had to. He wasn't... It wasn't safe. And I needed him to be quiet. He'll he'll understand if I can find... Jesus, there's still blood in my hair. When we first got here, I made sure Nej was... Yeah. And then I then I showered. And the water was just... Red. It didn't even look diluted. The blood, there was that much of it. The clothes I was wearing are completely ruined. I'm wearing stuff from the drawers of the people who own this cottage. The people I nearly killed. Whom... I might have actually killed, I don't, I thought I might have to shave my fucking head, there was that much blood and viscera in my hair, I, I've been a nurse for ten years, I had never seen anything like that, and so much of it was, it was me, and I, 
Right, no, I can't be like this. I can't fucking be like this. I have to stop crying. It's gonna make the blood debt worse. God, what am I gonna do? I can't feel Casper anymore. <laughs> Maybe it's just distance, but I, I can't feel him. I want to ask Nej, but he's, he's. I can't fucking ask him. <sighs> okay, I need to do this now while I can still think. I drove out of the city, following that pull. I feel that ties me to Nej, but it was, it was very fucking hard because of Casper. Nej, he was heading north, but whoever took Casper, they've gone south, and I. The further away he got, the worse it felt. Like they were actually tearing something out of me. It felt like. Eventually, though, it just stopped. I don't even know when it stopped. There was so much pain. I, w I was trying to focus to block it out, but I was driving for hours and hours further and further north. I had to stop, refuel the car to find something to eat. I almost killed a guy. And sometime around there, I was just... I just became aware that it, w it was gone. He... I started to panic. I wanted to drive south to try to chase it, to, to see if I could... But Nej... It's a different sort of feeling with Nej. It's fuzzier, more generalised, but I had this pit in my stomach. I knew they were hurting him. The more I tried to hang on to those threads of Casper, and it just... I don't know where he's gone. I don't know where they... what. But he's sleeping. He can't, he can't feel it. So. Shit. Stop crying. Stop crying. Ugh. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So yeah. I, uh, I lost track of Cass. I don't know what that means. I hope it doesn't mean. The, uh, the second petrol station I stopped at had one of those sad hotels on it. The ambulance van they had Nej in, I hadn't seen it for a while. I'd been trying to stay back in the traffic so they didn't realise I was following them, but I, I honestly don't know. I, I became more and more aware. There were too many ambulances on the road and none of them looked right. They were too old, too battered looking. I don't know. And I was worried I was going to lose track of which one they had Nej in, so... I closed the gap a little. I was so scared they were going to recognise the car, so when we got to that petrol station with the hotel on it, I, I just took a different one. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. I, I, I swear I intended to give it back. I, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I'm sorry. I waited by the side of the hotel until someone came out to smoke, and I, I, I fucking... I don't, I jumped them, I, I don't like how it felt, grabbing them, holding them close, feeling that funny prickling feeling I get in my nose when I'm glamouring them without meaning to, feeling them go slack in my arms. I only drank from them a little, just enough that my blood debt didn't feel so awful after all of that panic and stress. I took their keys. I just stood in the parking lot, pressing the button on the keys until I found the car, and then I just took it. And fortunately, it was this little sturdy thing. It can run for miles and miles on fumes. Thank fuck. But look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It took a while for me to find Nej in the van again after that. The connection between us, it, it, like, I can follow the tie to Nej, but it's vague. It doesn't help very much with following roads or getting to specific destinations. It's not really a... It's not in my brain. It's hard to explain it. It's like my body knows where he is and it follows, but it's kind of... It's hard to explain. With Casper, it was a little different. Maybe not different, just strong. I, Yeah, it's weird. I nearly lost them again around Glasgow. The roads got busier there. It was still four in the morning, so it wasn't crazy, but I was having to rely too much on that fuzzy, wordless, senseless pull towards him. It was hard to try to concentrate on that too much, because the more I tried to follow the feeling, the more aware I got that Nej was hurting. 
it's like I'm hurting too. It's like pain without sense or meaning coming from no particular place in your body. It just made my eyes sting and my ears ring. Uh, by the time we were out in the countryside, I was shaking. There was a benefit to the open, empty, winding roads. I could smell recent tyre tracks. I knew that the ambulance they had in Eugene was at least half an hour ahead of me. I tried to follow slowly so I could definitely stay out of sight, but it was getting close to dawn, so there was only so much I could dawdle. I wasn't sure when the sun would come up. We are pretty close to the winter solstice, so I knew it would be after eight, but I didn't know when because who the fuck knows that kind of thing. I was just so far north, I wasn't sure if that would have affected anything. The car I'd stolen was small. There was nothing to cover the windows. The boot was not big enough to get in. I hadn't seen anything substantial enough to shelter me, not a house, not anything for an hour. What could I do? Hide in my own clothes? UV can get through some fabrics. I, I didn't know what to do. There were just hills and bushes and long grass and I was terrified I was going to run out of petrol and the sun would come up and I'd be blistered and cooked in my own skin. And, and then I saw it. It looked like an ordinary office building, the kind you get on the way out of a biggish town. Concrete and square windows. It wasn't near anything, it was just there in the middle of nowhere, grey and uniform peeking out from behind a hill. I pulled off the road, turned off the little car's engine. There were lights on in the office building. I walked towards the building in the undergrowth, several metres from the road. I kept as low as I could while still moving fast. There was wind rustling the bushes and the trees around me hiding my footsteps even as I crunched through fresh frost. It stirred the smells of cars, plants, hydrochloric acid and hospital disinfecting into a swirling, nonsensical mess. There were people in that building, I could just about tell, and there were vampires. Importantly, though, I knew Nej was there. When I paid attention to that nasty tug inside of me, it was like my whole body was just vibrating slightly, a low, constant buzz of pain. He'd been suffering like that for fucking hours. I shook myself, pushed past it, and crept along the edge of the car park. Behind the row of vans was a covered driveway like an ambulance bay. It even had yellow painted grids on the ageing tarmac. They didn't look as though they'd been refreshed in years. Instead of attaching to an A&E, though, under the covered drive were just two large garage doors. One of them was shut. The other, though, showed a sliver of darkness about two feet high. I pressed my back flat against the wall of the building. The rough concrete was smoothed over with green algae, and under my fingertips I felt the frosted surface crack and give way to the softness underneath, squishy between my hands and the hard wall. I lowered myself down and strained my ears to listen. I couldn't hear breathing or the thud of human hearts, but there was something moving not far inside the garage door. I breathed in, deep and low. Sheltered from the wind by the building and the cover overhead, the smells inside it were easier to distinguish. There were 50 or so humans that came here regularly. Some of them seemed to be living in caravans stationed on the hills nearby. I could smell them sleeping. Of the cars outside, most had been parked for hours, but there were three vans whose engines were still cling, giving off that hot metal smell. One of them was the one that Nedge had been taken in. The others had had different vampires inside. The smell was a knotty mess. I couldn't unpick it. Through the gap in the garage door, I could smell dry heat. Everything was humming, like I was standing at the back of a giant fridge. When I crouched down by the gap, I could feel warm air leaking out of it, and on that air, I could smell more vampires. It was odd. I was confused at first. There was, there was too much of it, too many layers. It was not immediately recognisable for what it was. So many nuances in tone and fragrance conflicting and competing. I remembered Casper saying once that some vampires learn to have an exceptional nose. Naj said Casper was like that. He could tell apart scent trails that were weeks old, smell a vampire's maker in his blood, even if he'd just drunk from someone else. With humans, I can smell blood type, cortisol, dopamine, and make out any recent additives, medicinal or recreational, but nothing complicated. But even to me, even to me, I... 
Probably to human noses, that intake bay would just smell of cleaning products and maybe some unpleasant sickly undertone, but to me, to any vampire brought through those doors, it was like being hit in the face with an entire brick wall, overwhelming, impossible to process. There were so many layers, so much, like walking into a headache, overwhelmingly, it stank of death. I had to lie very still and hold my breath because if I let myself breathe it in too long, I was sure I was going to throw up. It was like getting screamed at. It was... Yeah. But I had to smell it. I had to find Nej somehow in the noise of it all. So I took a little breath, let it burn the inside of my nose. There were layers on top of it layers of bleach and disinfectant, and all of it, none of it could really hide the smell of the rot. It oozed up from the concrete floors, from the drains at the corners of the room, even though I could tell they poured hydrochloric acid down there regularly. There were large industrial air vents coming out of the wall. They oozed the boozy, familiar smell of living vampires and the horrid, sweet stink of the recently half-made The hot air wafted in and accumulated near the high, high ceilings, only barely noticeable above the stink radiating up from the cold floor. I got shaking to my feet. I could hear that small, barely audible sound beneath the hum of whatever machines were going. It was dark, but there was enough light for my vampire eyes to make out white tarpaulins hiding something on the floor by the wall. That's where the wrestling was coming from. I walked over slow. Standing over the tops, I could tell they were covering bodies. One of them was moving, just a little. A vampire. The smell of their blood was overwhelming, making my head throb and my throat ache. They had barely anything left inside of them, not enough energy for even the drive to kill to make them move up from the wooden pallet they were lying on under the tarp. There was nothing I could do to help. I had needed to hunt before we went to the river. More than five hours of panic and driving had burned through the new reserves from the man I'd eaten at the service stop, and it would have taken huge quantities of blood to save them, and I... I said I was sorry. I don't know if they heard. waking up. Uh, 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 Alfie. Alfie, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alfie. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm... I don't have enough. Alfie. I can't let you out. I'm sorry. Alfie. Alfie. No, I know. Alfie. Shh. Shh. Alfie, stop, sweet. Please don't break anything else, please. Here. Oh. I know, I know. Alfie. I'm sorry. I don't think there's enough left to knock you out, but hopefully it'll make it hurt less. I'm sorry. No. No, you're not dying, love. You're not. You're okay. But I know, kitten. I know. Alfie. I can't come closer, darling. But I'm sorry. It's not safe. Alfie. I I know, I know. I <laughs> fucking Alfie. I can't I can't even be in here. I'm scared of I don't wanna hurt you. I... Alfie. No. Alfie. Uh I'm sorry. I have to. I have to go and sort the car out. I'm. I have to get. I'll be back. I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to. If I don't, we're both dead.
that was the last I have of the drugs. He's in pain, he's barely holding on to himself. When he wakes up again, I don't know how much thinking he'll be able to... I'm surprised he's still speaking now, honestly. He's too weak to heal. I could kill him by accident. I have to find a way to hunt or we're both going to fucking die out here. Shit, I'm I'm pretty deep into blood debt and there are open wounds on him. I, I am finding it very hard to be near him without After I attacked that couple, I gave him as much blood as I could without losing my mind. It helped him stop actively bleeding, which is good, but I think... I think there are parts of his insides missing. <laughs> fucking, fucking fuck! That place, it was so... corporate. The lab in the woods where they had Casper, it felt like, I don't know, it felt secret underground. It was literally half buried. There was proper medical equipment, but everything looked old. The walls were tiled, the ventilation was bad, the beds they had people strapped to, they looked like something out of a film, they were that ancient. But this place, though, it was tidy, slick, well-organized, efficient. There were at least 10 floors, including two underground lab spaces. They were whitewashed, the walls were covered in clean linoleum. Everything smelled clean and fresh, hospital clean. There were even full hand sanitizer pumps next to every door, reminders to wear proper protection, to change gloves and gowns between patient rooms. Yeah. Patient rooms. After I decided I couldn't with the, the tarpaulin, I walked to the back of the intake garage, past the ambulance fans, to the wall the air vents were coming out of. There were three doors. One was locked. The second led to a huge storage space, filled with carefully organised boxes of lab supplies and protective equipment. It was better stocked than any hospital I've worked at, though granted they were all NHS, so... I spotted a box of scrubs, grabbed it off the shelf, and tucked myself away a few rows down. I pulled into some scrubs and half-emptied a bottle of hand sanitizer onto my arms, face and head. It wouldn't do much for my appearance, but it would at least neutralise the smell of river and murder, which was still clinging thickly to me, especially to my hair. The hand sanitizer mushed all of the mess into spikes. My fingers looked like they were covered in disgusting pale brown hair gel when I was done, but at least I didn't smell as bad. I covered my head with a scrub cap and stuck a mask over my face. Near the door there were boxes of office supplies and I'd seen lanyards on my way out to the back. I grabbed a blank name tag, a lanyard and some paper clips to hang from it. If anyone got too close to me or looked too hard I'd be fucked, but I hoped my disguise was good enough that nobody would think to take a second glance. This path is a lot hillier than I remember it being when I walked here. Though I was fucking panicking, so, you know. And the last time I made this walk I was carrying Nej. I drugged the fuck out of him. I didn't want to, but once I'd let him drink from me, he wouldn't stop screaming. The smallest bit of energy, and he just used it to scream and try to kill me. I had to fucking gag him. I was scared he was going to wake up and bite me as I carried him. In fairness to me, he chewed through that fucking cloth I tied into his mouth within two hours, despite being barely conscious at all, so it's a valid worry. If a cloth hadn't been there, that would have been my neck. I've got him tied to the bed now. Ankles and wrists. I have tried to pad out the belts I used with t-shirts and socks I found in the clothes drawers, but he's still hurting himself. It's not intentional, it's just instinct. Every time he gets a bit more conscious, he just thrashes. I'm pretty sure both his shoulders are dislocated. It's the drive to kill. He has to get free so he can hunt, so he can heal. But there's nobody here to hunt except me, and... I don't want to go out like that. There's nothing I can do. If he bites me again, he'll kill me. If I bite him, he's definitely dead. He's... That room, what they did.
in my stolen scrubs, it was pretty easy to get through the building. I spotted a woman who was also in scrubs, talking on her phone, almost as soon as I got inside. She held open a keycard controlled lift for me to follow her inside. She was talking to her kid, I think, telling her she'd be home before she had to go to school in the morning, that she was sorry she'd missed bedtime again. I almost feel bad for what I did to her. If the extraction, she asked me as we stepped out of the lift. It was a long hallway lit with cold strip lights. There were white doors with small observation windows at eye level. Each one had a patient code and a chart stuck underneath. No names, just numbers. As we walked down the corridor, I glanced through the windows. Some of them were half maids. They were either missing arms entirely or had them strapped to their sides. They stood as close to the doors as they could, murky eyes staring through the slots, though of course they couldn't see. Other rooms held either full vampires or humans in hospital gowns. I couldn't tell you which because the doors were all vacuum sealed and no one was coming in or out of them. Some of them, too, stood with their eyes towards the observation windows, only the slightest suggestion they had any more awareness than the half-maids. Some of them were hunched in corners. There were no beds, no chairs for them to lie on. They clung to their knees, rocking, barefoot, back and forth. The only movement in the corridor itself was around two double doors at the end. Exciting, isn't it? the woman asked me. Yeah, I said. I normally work at the Edinburgh operation. Where have they shipped you in from? York, I said. The woman gasped excitedly. Oh, that's amazing. You've got so much hands-on experience with this kind of thing. I'm so glad to have you. It must be great to get stuck back in. I know you've all been on lockdown since the incident in the spring. It's such a shame about all your ongoing projects. Yeah, really frustrating, I said. I'm just hoping the hypothesis is right, said the woman. She held open one of the double doors. <sighs> the smell of Nezh was everywhere. Everywhere. It hit me like a punch in the face. He was in the centre of the room, and I couldn't tell how bad it was at first because he was covered with surgical sheeting. The woman who let me in went over to the sink in the corner to wash her hands alongside another person in scrubs. Joanna, he said, delightedly. Hi, she said, a long time no see. Is this someone else from Edinburgh, the man said, nodding at me. His eyes crinkled like he was smiling under his surgical mask. No, I said. That's right, said Joanna, he's from York. I was only half listening to Joanna, though, because I'd taken a couple of steps towards the sinks, and in doing so, I placed myself directly at the base of the operating table. A small pump was whirring. Five thick gauge lines ran from it, dark red inside clear tubing. Nezha's blood. They were extracting his fucking blood. I was shaking. I took half a step towards him, knocking into a small table of surgical supplies. The equipment laid out was all familiar, but the scalpels had pale ivory blades. I peered closer. Vampire teeth. They had made scalpels out of our own fucking teeth so that their incisions would take longer to close. I was so angry, I couldn't feel my face or my hands. I couldn't move. I didn't even think about what I was going to do next, beyond noting that there were eight people in the room. Six of them were distracted. One of them had her hands inside of Nesh's chest. You all right? asked Joanna. Yeah, I said, though I absolutely fucking wasn't. Sorry, what did you say your name was? she asked. Alfie, I said. I took off my mask. My name is Alfie. There was a confused moment of quiet from Joanna and her friend by the sink. I turned my back to the room and went over to the door. It had looked heavy as Joanna held it open to let me follow her inside, and it was. A lot of operating theatres have doors like that. It's so that a vulnerable patient is less likely to die in a fire should one break out. These doors also have emergency bolts at the bottom in case there's an intruder that you and your patient need to be protected from. Oh, irony is sweet. I bent over and I bolted the door fucking shut. I stood up slowly. What are you doing? said Joanna. 
and that is the last thing she ever fucking said. I, I, I honestly don't know. I, I don't know how. I remember moving, but it was like, I, I felt nothing. I just moved the heat of their insides on my palms between my fingers, the give of their skin under my teeth, the rush of their blood spilling over my tongue, the flavors mixing, spinning out. I remember the clatter of surgical instruments, choked off screams, and the thud of the door slamming open as one of them finally wrenched the lock open and made it out of the room. They didn't get far. I'd fucked them up too much for that, but they got far enough to trigger an alarm. I slammed into his back with my foot. I felt his ribs crack. When he screamed, it bubbled out of him, like he was face down in shallow water. The alarms were so loud, I could feel them in my bones. Back in the theatre, I... When I walked back in, I saw it. What I had done to those people. Their eyes looking up at me, hollow. Heads barely on necks. Some of them were just about breathing still. Wet, thick, guttural. I didn't fucking care. I was glad. I, I'm still, I don't. I, <laughs> the machine nurse was hooked up to. I pulled the lines out of it, blood spilling cold over my hands. I caught as much as I could by drinking it, folding the lines in my hands to stem the flow. It tasted wrong, it tasted strange. Drugs, barbiturates, they were making me spin. I went to the operating table and I pulled the sheets aside and... He was cut, like Casper had been cut throat to pelvis. His sternum, I, I couldn't think. The alarms were so fucking loud. There was surgical wire. I, I wound it around his, around his sternum. I pulled it shut, folded the skin back and stapled and stapled. It was a fucking mess, but I, I, it didn't have time. I, fuck. The alarms were so loud, so fucking loud. I disconnected it from the lines. They were still half full of blood. I drank as much as I could out of them. I could taste the drugs they'd pumped him with, what they were, what the dose must have been. I knew if I drank much more, it'd make me woozy and I needed to be sharp. I, I couldn't, I had to fucking get him out. I went back to the machine itself. His blood was being collected into a series of flasks. There didn't seem to be enough of them to hold everything he was missing, but I couldn't see any others. I couldn't drink it and he was too heavily sedated to, so I just kind of lost it. I don't, like, I hadn't already killed a room full of people, but I just... Everything that looked like it might have his blood in it. Cabinets, fridges, machinery. I started pulling objects over, kicking it to shit. Just fuck. They don't get it. They don't get to fucking keep it. The blood in the machine. I pulled the vials out, poured them into Nesh's mouth. He was so still. Horrifically still. When the blood touched his mouth, though, his eyes split open. He drank, pulling on the restraints I hadn't realised he was locked in. I was so focused on the lines, his blood, the machine. I, I needed to get him out. I needed a key card. I fumbled on one of the bodies on the floor, pulled out a bloody lanyard. The doors burst open and there was this hot, sharp pain, like fire in my chest. I flew backwards, away from Nash. They shot me. They fucking shot me. Once, twice, three times. I, I was bleeding. I was aching. All the blood from the people I'd just killed. It, it didn't matter. I was fucking on the edge of sanity in one minute, maybe two. And I couldn't even see. I was possessed. I just moved. Animal. Absent. Why would they? Fucking stupid idiots. Like, I didn't need to think. It just happened. And most of them were dead. I think they shot me more. I don't, I don't know, really. I ended up on my knees. A man in a bulletproof vest was holding a gun to my head. 
others were trying to pass us to get to Nej. And it occurred to me then in that moment that if I didn't do anything, we were going to die. I leapt to my feet, slammed the lanyard against the black box beside one of the doors in the corridor. It buzzed and I shoved it open, shrinking against the wall as the stinking, growling husk behind it shambled forwards. I swiped the keycard against another door and another, flinging them wide as I ran. If it wasn't chaos already, it was chaos after that. Bullets rang out, their casing like bright bells as they struck the floor, cutting through the relentless, swelling, ringing of the alarms blaring out around us. They weren't shooting at me anymore, they were shooting at them, the things coming out of some of the rooms I'd unlocked. The half-maid reacted to the bullets even less than I did, not slowing in loping strides, arms reaching out to the people holding rifles towards them, skin sloughing half from bone. I shoved the whole table Nej was on towards the left. As the doors slid shut behind us, one of the people with guns pointed it at me. And they shot me in the head. And it was... I felt the crack of it. Everything went dark. When I came back to myself, I was in the lift with Nej and there were bits of people on me. I was looking at my hands and I just, I felt far away from myself. I felt electrified, like my whole body was vibrating, like I could spring forward like a coil. The doors on the lift opened. The alarms were still ringing, but there was no sign that anyone was coming this time. I could hear gunfire. I pulled Nezha's restraints off. He was semi-conscious, mumbling words in dead languages, and I... What is that smell? Oh my god. The car. The car is on fire. Shit. Shit. They found us. Shit. Stop shooting at me! Jesus fuck Ah fuck my fucking shoulder Shaking. Uh, 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 that's everything out of the car. Um, <clears throat> it's me, it's me. I know, I know, I just need to. Shut up, Nez. No, please, please, please let go. Chambre family. C'est pas. In there. Oh, don't bite me. If you bite me, I will fucking. Nej, not me. Nej, them. Them. Oh. Danger. Ah. Come here. Dead. Sneaked in the mouth.
did not mean to hurt you. I'm sorry, you don't have. Thank you, thank you. Shh, shh, thank you. Oh, I have you, I have you. Come to me. Envie, my love. Where the fuck are we? Um, I don't know exactly. Somewhere in the north of Scotland. Okay. Here's our love. Or more of them coming. Um. The men with guns, bijou. Will there be more? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yes. Mert. I'm sorry. No. C'est bon, my dear love. Ah. My head is still not clear. They're coming first, I think. Oui? Yeah. What is the time? Um... The time, mon petit, come on. Um, eleven. Eleven at night. Bien. Très bien. Oh, so you are so good. You are doing so good. Come on now, little love. Move on your feet. What? We cannot stay. Come on. Clothes. Are there clothes here? Yeah. D'accord. Uh, uh, look, the car. They burned the car. Ah. Mert. Put on the mat. Do not worry. There is an alternative. I... I checked. There isn't. Put this on. I am covered in... We are both covered in blood. It does not matter. I think we will be out of sight most of the way, depending on the... I think it is only a few miles to the sea. Don't worry. Ah. Ah. Alfie, look at me. I love you. It is going to be okay. I'm going to keep you safe. Okay. Where are we going to go? Somewhere safe eventually, but first, anywhere that is not here. What is this? It's the stuff from Cass's car. Okay, good. You keep hold of that. Yeah. Come on. We can't walk, it's too... The car is on fire. Yeah. It's very good. Yes? Are you fucking serious? The car is on fire. This will have to I do. I don't know how to ride a fucking horse. Lucky for you, I do. Now, come on. Come, come. Les jeunes. Come. You didn't put on a saddle. I learned to ride before then. Always find they get in the way. Especially with two of us. You're strong enough. Come on. No, I... I can't. I... You what? I don't know. If we stay here, Elsie, we are going to die. There is no alternative to this. You have two options. Die, or you come with me, and you get to start whatever vampire revolution you want. What are you talking about? What you have been saying between the lines, Elsie. What's happened to me? What's happened to Casper? We cannot let this happen again. We have to change something. And to do that, we have to leave right now. I'm scared. Do you want to die or do you want to change the fucking world, eh? I don't want to die. Okay then. Give me your hand. You're insane. Quite possibly. I'm insane. We. Oui. This I know for certain. Fuck, I love you. <laughs> oui. Quite Dead is written, created, and performed by Aira Major under a Creative Commons 4.0 attribution license, and this is the end of season three. I couldn't make this show without the incredible support of my contributors over on Patreon. Without you, none of this would have happened. Thank you so much for helping make this show possible. I make this show for you, the listeners, and it means the world that you tune in and listen to it. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey, and I look forward to bringing you season four in 2025. Until then, Live, laugh, bite.